when I was last here. Many of my best remembered places were already fading. Our film's about the late theologian and writer John Hull, who lost his sight in the early 1980s. Um, and to help him kind of come to terms with blindness, began keeping these audio diaries um, on, 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 on cassette. Over the course of three years, John recorded almost 16 hours worth of material, um, detailing the impact of blindness on, on his life, on his relationships, and his psychological state. And what, become, what starts as a, a sort of um, a story of, of loss and of, of grief almost um, becomes um, one of rebirth and renewal as John comes to see blindness as this, this sort of dark paradoxical gift around which he, um, he completely redefines his, his, his life. So with regards to the lip syncing uh, technique that, that kind of developed, um, we, we began kind of um, trying to shape all of these audio materials into, into what is in effect a kind of audio version of the screenplay. So by the time we came to, to shoot the film, we not only had a written screenplay, but we also had um, a sort of 90-minute audio piece whereby the dialogue and the narration could be listened to um, alongside reading, um, reading the script. Um, and we, we cast actors who would lip sync to this material um, and then when it came to it on set we'd, we'd, we'd sort of cue the, these lines with, with sort of audio pips. Um, so we didn't record any sound on set, we'd have a, what we call a playback engineer who would uh, sort of jockey the material for us. Um, and it was, yeah, certainly a, an interesting way of making a film. Just move in. Just move in. Framing of, of supporting characters became very important to us. Um, in, in John's account, he talks about the recession of visual memory. He talks about how the faces of his loved ones become fossilised and then, then, then grow faint and then, and then fade altogether. And, um, and this informed our kind of decision to, to try and um, always frame characters, supporting characters, apart from his wife Marilyn, in shadow or fragment the frame somehow, shooting them um, through, through surfaces or obscuring the frame. And as well as that sort of considered use of, of light and shadow to try and denote kind of shades of awareness really, to try and help suggest John's reduced world of blindness as he referred to it. We'd sort of try and avoid using clean wide shots that might give the audience a kind of privileged perspective of the scene. We try and suggest the, the predominance of, of the auditory or tactile um, um, senses in John's experience of blindness. After losing his sight in the early 1980s, the, the family sort of resolved to, to return to Australia um, in 1984. His nationality and his home country was always very important to, to him. That's the place where we used to play footy. John referred to the experience of blindness as, as, as a world and he, his ambition was to, to, to try and bring together both the blind world and the sighted world. Um, and we hope really that our, our film um, does justice to, to, his, to his work and, and, and comes a little bit closer to fulfilling that ambition of, 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 of communicating his experience.